Uh, yes, I'm Etienne Mayberg. I'm an oncology surgeon in Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, I have a practice there with uh, several other oncologists where we deal mainly with head and neck cancers and breast cancer. And we're also quite involved in genomics in cancer work. I think the value of OncoDeep comes into play where patients have failed their first line of therapy or patients have had progression of disease. In our metastatic setting, uh, patients who have failed or progressed on first line metastatic treatment, uh, the question is always what second line would be most appropriate for the patient. We know we have several different options and with the OncoDeep report we find that it would guide us in terms of which drugs to use as second or maybe even third line. In the head and neck setting, we do often see patients who have progression of disease or poor response to systemic chemotherapy or chemo induction. And in those patients, it's often difficult to decide what the best second line options would be, especially with biological agents becoming available uh, and selecting the patients most appropriate for those biological agents. So this is a patient that presented with metastatic neck nodes on the left hand side. Uh, he had an unknown head and neck primary. It was histologically a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. And the patient had the standard uh, induction therapy uh, starting with a platinum. He also, he also had radiotherapy after he completed a neck dissection. But even before completing the radiotherapy course, the patient uh, developed a, a palpable lymph node in the left axilla. Uh, this was further investigated and at that time he also was found to have contralateral neck nodes. That this was operated and, it was the, uh, and the decision was made to treat him with cetuximab. He was started on that treatment but fairly early on in treatment he already developed l uh, lymph nodes in the right axilla. The, this patient obviously had progression of his disease in spite of first and second line systemic therapy options. We were considering the use of a PDL1 inhibitor and performed an onco deep test to see what targets we could potentially uh, use. The Onco Deep test confirmed that he had quite high expression of PDL1 and subsequently the patient was started with nivolumab. He's had an excellent response so far and over the past six months he has had no further signs of progression of disease. So I think the Onco Deep test really helped us in confirming that this patient would in fact uh, be a good candidate for this very expensive therapy in South Africa. The newer biological agents are not covered by medical aids frequently. Uh, these patients often have to pay for this out of pocket um, and the, the cost of it is a major factor. And I think if one can select the patients that are most probable to respond to these therapies, one can certainly use them in a more cost-effective fashion. Yes, definitely. I think we are expanding our experience with OncoDeep. Uh, we're using it more frequently in our breast cancer patients. We said we've had some ovarian cancer patients we've, where we've used it on. And I think in head and neck cancers, uh, I think the role will certainly be expanding. So I definitely foresee that we will, um, you know, we are, we are busy finding out exactly where in our clinical practice would be the most appropriate role for OncoDeep to be used.